In this series, we're building an insane but practical Razer MX650 upgrade using our new Rail 4 battery technology. Be sure to stick around so we can show you the modification process and we're gonna put this thing to the test. We've already started disassembling this to make sure our upgrades will work. That's right, so today we're gonna be focusing on upgrading the battery, the suspension, and the cosmetics. I actually got this kit from Facebook Marketplace. I was looking at all the Facebook groups, modified razors for adults and such, and I had a kit suggested to me uh, by a man named Kurt Minto, who makes his own DIY three inch lift kit for both the front and the rear. The whole kit ran me about $177, including the tools needed to install. So this whole kit is a suspension upgrade kit. So you're actually building your own front suspension using the components from the stock suspension. And then you have a just a new rear shock to add on. This is mainly because I'm going to be taking the wheels off, so I'm going to need to have all the weight off of them. Right now, I am just fitting the uh, enclosure down here just to see if it will slide on and off. Uh, I think we're going to have plenty of room. This is just going to have to get installed right here. Rail core is essentially a modular system where you attach this rail to anything you want to electrify. So in this case, it is a Razor MX650, but you can also mount this rail on a skateboard, a scooter, a bike, a go-kart, a robot, whatever you want to electrify. Once this rail is on there, you can essentially slide this battery into the rail and install it and uninstall it in seconds. So that's literally all it takes. There's a little pin that goes in the back here. Um, and this allows you to swap batteries if you run out of range. It also allows you to extend the rail and add multiple batteries in like a daisy chain situation. We, we are daisy chaining them here, it's just that we don't have a long flat area to connect them. This connector's spliced um, and I just need to solder this wire to the connector so that we can connect it to the rail core. Should be pretty easy. So we're gonna mount one battery right here. Then I'm gonna plug this cable in uh, to the battery on the bottom and then put another battery right here. And then it will plug into here and then that will essentially be the daisy chain system there. So, oh, we're not gonna have any way to turn it on and off. We have to keep the switch. Can you splice that switch into our current switch? On off through using the controller. A, we're not using a Z. I know, but the on off is still through the controller so it should work with the battery, right? No, this is, this is a, this switch is what controls it on off. So this has a kind of specialty connector on it that I need to be able to harvest off. I also have to keep the switch because we still need some way to turn it on and off. So I'm gonna have to uninstall this switch and then wire up some kind of connector to plug in this to our battery and also to the uh, ESC on there while still using the switch. All right, so I just harvested the switch from here. Um, and now what I need to do is the battery plugs into here. So I need to make a cable that goes from this plug to uh, the battery on our rail core. And then this will stay the same and this is what plugs into the ESC. So now what I have to do is I need to harvest this connector so that we can make the adapter. And just to do this safely, um, you wanna be cutting the wires of different lengths. Preferably, actually, you might not even need to cut at all. This is a fuse. We probably do wanna keep that in there. Actually, 30 amps isn't gonna be enough. Let's see if there's a bigger fuse in here. Yes, these are all 30 amp fuse, which is good. I'm glad they have fuses in there. Um, but then just to do this safely, you need to make sure nothing's connected so there's no circuit between all of these. And then you're gonna cut the wires at different lengths. So you're not gonna cut the wires here because then you can short them. So you just cut them at different lengths. If this wire here ever touches a black wire from over here, then it shorts and that's when you'll have sparks. Um, so you just kind of want to make sure that that can never happen. And then just to be extra safe, we're going to wrap them in electronics. The rail core batteries that we're using work with the stock electronics and motor. So that's saving you both time and money of not having to buy a new part and install it on the bike. These batteries are a slightly higher voltage, so you will be getting a slight power upgrade off of the stock battery while not having to replace anything that is already on the bike. So we have three lead acid batteries put in series. They're each 12 volts, so this is 36 volt. This is, it's running off a 36 volt battery right now. The BKB battery is 50.4 when it's fully charged. We're gonna incrementally step it up to 50.4 with a power supply, which would then show us if it's gonna work with our battery. So if it passes this test, we can put a BKB battery from the rail core on this, on this uh, Razor and it would work, which would make it 
insanely much, like orders of magnitude more powerful. All right, so now we're doing 48 volts. Doesn't smell bad, which is good. I think we do. We just tried 48 volts, which is what most people do to overvolt these batteries. We're going up to our max now, which is 50.4, right? Yeah, 50.4. All right. So that is 12 volts battery in a rail core, which is only three volts different than the 48 volt. It's running it. Yeah. Testing, done. Bike no, or anything like that? Yeah. I've never done suspension on a bike before. At this point, I'm about to disconnect a screw inside here that holds the spring with this homemade tool that was sent to me. Send me all the parts to make this extension bit so I can fit it all the way down in here to undo the screw. It's so tight. Someone definitely took this thing apart before us because it was like full on there's full on like nuts missing from this brake. This is how loose it is. Yeah, I loosened I, one down here. This yeah. is supposed to have a nut on it. I told you that the brakes be janky. That should be a line. The brakes be janky. Brakes be janky. The brakes be janky. This, there's no way the switch is rated for how much voltage and current we're gonna be putting through it, so. This is literally just like a contactor switch and the contacts aren't rated for that high. It's just, I, it might be a sizable current load, but they're usually not. Coming next video, you guys are gonna see we're upgrading the brakes. It's always smart to upgrade the brakes if you're going faster. There we go. There we go. Ta -da. Just took off the, uh, that's what the axle mounts to. This, the suspension is actually inside here. It's going to be, these are all upgraded components and then these are the stock parts. I'm adding these springs into here to basically extend the fork. So you'll have the standard spring and then there'll be a, this spring, which is a bit stiffer. So it'll always keep that height, but it'll still have room to dampen if you go over these bumps. So I'm using this metal hook here to get the top of the bushing and the piece of the spring out. It was a little short, so I added this little tab on the end for me to hold on to. The bushing for the spring inside the fork. So now I'm putting in these new aftermarket bushings. These are, these work as like a spring separator. So I'm just gonna grease these up and drop them in. There's these little grooves on the side of them. So they're like between the two springs? Correct. Very, very tiny. It's just the seam of where they warp the metal around. So you kind of use that as a guide to drop it down. What's your favorite kind of grease? Bacon. I'm about to throw in these two springs, which is gonna double the spring rate or add another spring rate to it. And then I'm gonna put these rubber dampers in the middle. I went with a stiffer spring rate. This is gonna compress a lot less easy. So it's gonna give us a lot more uh, rigidity, better overall off-road feel. I thought it was a little bit soft to begin with. I asked him that I could build this bike so that anybody up to about 220 can ride it comfortably. Cause I wanna be able to share it and have other people experience it. I also figured with all the rough riding that I'm gonna be doing, build it for a heavier rider and just beat it. Uh, it's like, didn't I just drop a spacer in here? Uh, black spacer? Yeah. Yeah. Not in there. Okay, so I think I may have dropped two of the bushings into the same fork. I'm gonna see if I can fish it out. I don't know how that happened. I must have not been paying attention. Yeah, I was right. I put two in one. What are you doing? Are you fishing? Putting bushings at the springs. Nice. Fishing for compliments, I'll tell you that. I bet you the ladies are gonna love my new MX650. I just finished this cable. So um, it will go essentially from here to here. Perfect. Into it, I was a bit intimidated as I, it's something I've never done before. Honestly, super easy. Um, it's very, very clear. Kurt's YouTube video is a big help. You have a snack break? Snack break. How do you feel that Jared hasn't offered you any of his snacks? Jared has snacks? 
That's nice of you. So now I'm about to put these new 3D printed bushings in. I just did a light coating of grease on the inside. I'm gonna put them into the fork. I'm gonna squeeze the top with pliers and lightly tap it on top of that board. So that way it'll properly seat into the forks. I don't wanna break these. So these bushings are, they're one-time use. So once you put them in, you most likely have to break them to get them out. It just says to like lightly sand the forks, the top of the forks. I'm gonna do that real quick. If you guys have any guesses as to why I just sanded those, please let me know down in the comments because uh, I got no clue. As you guys can see here, I've got the forks in. They're not bolted down or anything yet, so I really shouldn't be doing this too much. But you can see we have some light spring action. Now to push down harder, it's almost like a preload and then the dampening. I really wanted a ratchet to do this, but I didn't have one with the right size. In the middle of moving all our tools home. That's basically it for the front suspension. It really doesn't take that much. So now I'm gonna put the wheel back on, mount the brake again, and uh, work on the rear. Oh, you didn't need the slow walk? <laughs> so I have the rail. And essentially I need to mount it to the bottom of this plate here. So I'm gonna need to drill four holes through this tube and then through the metal plate. Okay, so this screw does not really wanna come out. And when it did turn, it had a bunch of resistance and now the head is stripped. So I need it. I need this metal frame out of here. So I'm literally just gonna cut the frame off. Okay, I'm not just gonna cut the frame off. There we go. This is the stock shock. Obviously it's already on there. And then here's our new shock. Um, just seems to be like it has a longer bottom piece to it. I'm not sure the correct name, I apologize. But it's just gonna mount up right there between here and here, and we should be good. Something I realized in the back for the suspension is you actually have an option. You have two different mounting points. Look down here. Is it on this bolt or this bolt? This is the stock bolt, the front one that they use. So it would sit like this. I know it's kind of like a rough measurement, but then if you were to go to the lower one, it would sit a little bit lower. So Jared, should we stick with stock placement or should we go a little bit lower? In order? Definitely stock. Stock? Yeah, I think, I think we're just too little big for it, so. We just installed the rear shock. We did the full front kit. So now I'm about to just tighten everything down. See how it feels. Wow. Like, wow. Like, wow. Sit on it. Yeah. This is much more comfortable to ride. Right? Yeah. If you're, a, if you're an adult sized human, you need this for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. So like if you do hit a big bump or anything like that, like obviously that suspension's pretty stiff, you know what I mean? But really, that's pretty good. With our battery system that we're using, we do not need to flatten the outside tray, just the front and the back. So I'm just gonna be hitting it with a hammer, getting it a little flatter so that way rail core can easily fit onto it, slide in and off, change out your batteries whenever you need. I'm about to take apart all the cables and electronics on it, and then I'm going to paint this thing. Uh, give it a nice paint job so that way it looks nice, kind of matches the brand, the business. But now we have this, which I can finally paint. So what I need to do now is just drill the frame where the rail core is going to mount, and then you can paint it and make it all look pretty. So the problem, which kind of sort of is a problem, is that the drill can't fit in here, so we can't drill down. Um, I might be able to get the first one, but I definitely won't be able to get the ones back here because there's no way to keep the drill straight. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use a zip tie. We're going to put the battery in and zip tie the battery or, or the, the battery down. And then the plastic cover, once it's painted, will cover up the zip tie so you won't see it. Um, and then you have an extra set of rails if you want to mount this on something else. 
there's, there's these mounting points right here. So there could be some kind of adapter where we just make the rail core instead of bolting down to here, we put this in and then there's two little tabs that come up and go over this. And then you use the same mounting point that's here already. Um, that would probably be ideal for both of these because then there's no drilling. Close to done. Yeah. It's just putting it back together and seeing if, see if it works. Be sure to tune in next week where we install some more modifications. And we finished the installation of Railcore and test it out. I'm BKB Snack. I'm the number one snack. And you're not gonna share the snacks with the snack? People still use that term.